This is Adi and you're listening to the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. In this episode, we talk to Jing Liu, a university student from Shanghai, China. Jing is one of the first contributors from China to have contributed to Bitcoin Core. His summer project on fuzzing improved the stability and security of Bitcoin Core's transaction handling. Jing discusses his views on Bitcoin, working on Bitcoin Core, and shares advice on open source Bitcoin development. Now, on to my conversation with Jing. Hope you enjoy it. Hey Jing, welcome to the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. Hey Eddie. All right, Jing, tell us a bit about yourself, you know, where do you come from and what are you doing? Okay, so thanks for having me here. I'm Jing Liu, currently a final year undergraduate studying cybersecurity at a university in Shanghai. There is a open source student club at my university. We regularly organize events to share our understanding of technology and promote open source culture. But I find it's not easy for new students to be involved in the open source world by themselves. They need immediate incentives and close guidance to familiarize themselves with open source development. I think Summer of Bitcoin can give them what they need. I had a chance to participate in Summer of Bitcoin last year, and I want to promote this activity to more students in China. Awesome. So tell us about how you got into Bitcoin. Like When and where was the first time you heard about it? And what was your first impression? Actually, I forget the exact time that I first heard about Bitcoin. It seems that Bitcoin suddenly became a hot topic in the mass media when I was in high school, but I didn't know any people around me who had actually owned Bitcoin. I remember that I tried to install a Bitcoin client on an old laptop, but the disk space is not large enough to download all the blocks required for running for node. Apparently, I didn't have the computing power or money to be involved in Bitcoin mining on transactions at that time as a teenager. Bitcoin is a great innovation, but I thought it was too late for me to step into the world of Bitcoin since the low hanging fruits has been picked. Later, China put more restrictions on cryptocurrency, so I didn't get the chance to dive deeper until I participated in the summer of Bitcoin. Interesting. Um... So, you know, now that you've participated in Summer of Bitcoin, um, you understand Bitcoin, not just from a technology perspective, but also uh, from the impact that it can have to the society. Tell us why you think you know, Bitcoin is important or you know, worth paying attention to. Yeah, okay. I think Bitcoin is the first successful attempt to build a decentralized finance system using blockchain technology. It allows for secure and transparent transactions without the need of intermediaries such as banks. This has the potential to disrupt traditional financial systems and challenge the current centralized power structure. Additionally, it is decentralized, meaning that it is not controlled by any government or financial institution, give users more control over their own assets. These unique features have made Bitcoin a popular and attention-worthy topic in the financial and technology industries. So let's switch gears to summer of Bitcoin and your experience through the application process. Like, Tell us maybe... You know, when or how did you first hear about Summer of Bitcoin? About one year ago, I saw a post on LinkedIn promoting Summer of Bitcoin. So I didn't pay any attention to that during that time. I thought it was similar to Google Summer of Code, but the projects were all related to Bitcoin. Since it was the first time that Summer of Bitcoin began to accept students from all over the world, I didn't know anyone in China who had participated in it. Indeed, like we I think you were one of the first people to apply from China. Um, yeah. Tell us, you know, what made you apply? Mm, I applied to some of Bitcoin for many reasons. 
Firstly, as an open source enthusiast, I really enjoy participating in programs like Summer of Bitcoin, where I can contribute to open source projects under the guidance of project maintainers and get stop stipends. In addition, I will be taking a course in blockchain at our university in the spring semester. So I think Summer of Bitcoin is a great opportunity for me to put theory into practice. Finally, I decided to apply to some of Bitcoin because I found a project idea that really fits my experience and interest. We can talk about the project here later. Yeah, before we you know dive into the specifics of the project that you worked on, um, maybe the audience you know would like to know uh, your experience going through the application process. You know, if you could elaborate that uh, that journey. Yeah. So. Generally, there are two rounds in the application process. First comes the screening round, then comes the proposal round. A few days late, later after I submitted my application, I got an email reminding me that I have passed the screening round. It seems that some applicants are required to take extra coding tests during the screening round. Anyway, I stepped in directly into the proposal round where I am expected to select a project idea and submit a proposal for that. I reached out to my mentor by email two weeks before the deadline to introduce myself. It was not until three days before the deadline that I made a draft proposal and sent it to my main mentor. Luckily, he gave me positive feedback and finally I was accepted. Yeah. And, um... So, you know, tell us about the organization that you ended up selecting, you know, what does it do and why did you apply to that specific organization? Let's take a quick break and hear about today's sponsor. Hey everyone, this is Adi. When I was starting in the Bitcoin industry a few years ago, there were hardly any resources to learn from. It was especially hard to find other like-minded Bitcoin developers and discuss about building apps on the Bitcoin blockchain. Well, things have changed, and I'm so excited to share with you about the Build on L2 initiative. Build on L2 is a community-led effort by contributors and companies building on Core Lightning and the Liquid Network. It's a space to connect with Bitcoin builders, product managers, designers, and developers through events and mentorship programs, and learn from experts building the future of Bitcoin. It's exactly what I wish I had when I was starting out in Bitcoin. Go to buildonl2.com to join the community and learn how to build killer apps on Bitcoin. Back to the show. Yeah, there are so many organizations to choose from. To be honest, I was not familiar with Bitcoin's ecosystem at that time. So I looked at the Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core is the reference implementation of Bitcoin written in C++. We all know that Bitcoin uh, is a cryptocurrency, but Bitcoin is also one of the most prominent distributed software systems in the world. After Bitcoin's inventor Satoshi Nakamoto released the original Bitcoin software and disappeared, the source code of Bitcoin has been maintained by a community. Everyone can be involved in the discussion of Bitcoin's development on GitHub and IRC channels. I think the active community can definitely help me learn about Bitcoin better. All right, let's dive into the specifics of your project that you worked on with Bitcoin Core. You know, tell us about the idea, what were the benefits to Bitcoin Core and obviously the overall Bitcoin ecosystem. Mm, yeah, Bitcoin Core is the dominant client running in the Bitcoin network. So it's crucial to ensure the security and reliability of Bitcoin Core. Fast testing, also known as fuzzing, is an effective technique to detect software vulnerabilities by running programs with a large number of random inputs. Bitcoin Core has developed a comprehensive testing infrastructure and applied fast testing to test its source code. But some components are not covered there by existing fast targets. In our case, fast targets are the pieces of code that can trigger specific fuzzing processes. My project aims to add fast targets for open transaction hand handling. 
Let's consider Bitcoin as a P2P network where nodes broadcast transaction records to each other. In Bitcoin's model, each transaction has one or more parent transactions. Since the broadcasting is non-deterministic, sometimes the nodes receive transactions whose parent transactions are currently unavailable. We call them orphan transactions because they don't have valid parents. If we can receive transactions that happen to be their parents in the future, these orphan transactions will be recognized as valid transactions. It's unreasonable for Bitcoin nodes to reject orphan transactions without waiting for their parents. So orphan transactions are usually stored for later processing. This leaves an attack service for denial of service vulnerability. Attackers can send large amounts of invalid transactions to cause memory exhaustion on Bitcoin nodes. This vulnerability was found 10 years ago and was fixed with a limit on the size of stored open transactions. My first targets improved the code coverage to more than 80%, so they did not find any new vulnerabilities. They do improve the stability and security of the Bitcoin tra transaction handling. Wow, so it's impressive that your fuzzing project um, helped increase the code coverage to more than 80% of, of Bitcoin core. So that's really awesome. Um, and the fact that it did not find any new vulnerabilities is obviously great in, because it seems like there weren't uh, any vulnerabilities. So your fuzzing project helped validate those. Um, hopefully, you know, if there are any vulnerabilities, we'll find about them soon as you uh, or as someone as, as maybe someone who extends the project um, or, you know, if you continue to work on it, yeah. maybe um, we get to that state. So yeah. um, talk to us about who your mentor was during Summer of Bitcoin and, you know, what was it like working with him? Yeah, my mentor is Michael Fake. He is a very nice and patient person. We had a video meeting before the coding period started. As a full-time maintainer of Bitcoin Core, he is much younger than I ex expected. Since we are in different time zones, we use Discord for daily communication. Initially, I was not familiar with the code base of Bitcoin Core. He pointed me to the existing code so I can look for the examples and write my own first targets for them. Whenever I have some questions or thoughts, he can always respond to me with detailed results and useful suggestions. In addition to my outcome, he also cares about my own interests and personal development. By working with him, I learned a lot about the open source development workflow of Bitcoin. Nice. So, Jing, you know, what are you up to now, like after the summer of Bitcoin internship? Yeah, after last year's summer of Bitcoin project, I have been busy applying for graduate students in North America. Now most things have been down, so I can have more spare time for open source contribution. Sometimes I review the pull requests on GitHub and leave comments on these related to Bitcoin's fuzzing infrastructure. I'm still in contact with my mentor. Last year, we attempted to make first targets for a newly introduced feature in Bitcoin called Package Relay, which we are potentially replace existing orphan transaction handling, handling code. However, the new feature has not been officially accepted, so we didn't finish it. I may apply for some of Bitcoin again this year to continue working on interesting projects. Absolutely. Looking forward to having you work again on Bitcoin this summer. Um, so Jing, maybe, you know, as parting thoughts, you know, if you, what advice would you give to beginners? You know, how should they go about understanding Bitcoin? especially if they are completely new to the space. Yeah, I started as a beginner learning Bitcoin myself. I think there are many great free resources available for people to understand Bitcoin from different perspectives. For developers, there is a famous book called Mastering Bitcoin. The book covers a wide range of topics on Bitcoin programming. You don't have to understand all the technical students details about Bitcoin. Once you have a basic knowledge of the Bitcoin system, you can dive deeper into one specific area that fits your interest and ongoing projects. 
And do you have any specific advice for open source development? You know, open source development is its own beast. Uh, it's definitely different from working at a typical job in a company. What advice would you give as far as, you know, open source development is concerned? Yeah, it may be a little tricky for newbies to understand the open source development workflow at the beginning. Although platforms like GitHub have been improving their user experience, you still have to learn stuff like Git, Markdown, Linux commands, and CI, CD. Please don't be afraid of them. You can get almost all you need by reading the official document and searching the web. If you cannot solve problems by yourself, reach out to the open source community and they will help you. Awesome. And you know, for applicants who are uh, applying to Summer of Bitcoin this year, do you have any tips on you know how do you crack Summer of Bitcoin and how to succeed during the internship? Yeah, I think the most thing import most important thing is to find a project idea that suits your path experience and interest. Then you do your homework to write a draft proposal and reach out to the mentor as soon as possible to get feedback. After you get accepted. Please stay in touch with your mentor to discuss your preferred communication channel and working style. Some of Bitcoin is an online internship, so we cannot expect that mentors sub supervise our progress all the time. We have to be self-motivated to succeed during the internship. Fantastic advice. Uh, hey, Jing, it was amazing to have you today on the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. Thank you so much for sharing with us about your experience. Yes, thank you, Eddie. It was great to talk with you. Thank you for listening to the Summer of Bitcoin Experience. I would love to get your thoughts on what else would you like to hear from these student developers and how to make this the most valuable podcast for getting started with Bitcoin open source development. Write to us at hello at summerofbitcoin.org. Can you do us a small favor? Go online and share this episode with at least one friend who you think would benefit from this episode. Until next time.